I'm Millie Shudo, and I've been an actor for, well, a really long time. You get my number. Call me. <laughs> I've worked with some of the most famous people in Hollywood. Anything unusual occur? Define unusual. And taken on some roles I'd rather forget. Now my industry friends join me with their stories of faking it, making it, and taking it in Hollywood. And now, here's Nelly. Welcome to my podcast. It's called 50 Moments, Faking It, Making It, and Taking It in Hollywood as a Working Actor. And it is based on my book, which is 50 chapters. And each time I do a podcast, it's going to be loosely based on a story that I experienced. I've been in this business for years. I started at 14 as a petite model and an actress. And then I quit to go to college and graduate school. And then I moved out to Hollywood. And I've had all kinds of experiences, um, most of them hilarious uh, because I seem to put my foot in my mouth, etc. Some of them very uh, tear jerky. But at any rate, I learned a lot. And uh, the truth is, whether you're in Hollywood or not in Hollywood, um, it's really about being an underdog. And I have spent years of my life on big movies with big people, feeling like an underdog and knowing my place. Uh, so each week I'm going to have a guest. And this week I have the amazing Terry Kaiser, who I've had the privilege of working with several times. You know him as Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's, amongst other things. But who does better physical comedy than Terry Kaiser? Who can play a dead guy for two hours in a movie and still be a leading man and still make people laugh? Uh, he's done everything from The Carol Burnett Show to Friday the 13th. He's currently working on a film festival in Ridgeway, Colorado that he's putting together. And I'm so pleased to have him on the show today. So we want to share a story about a guy we worked with, Joe Thomas, on a film that we shot in Nashville, Tennessee. And I signed on to the movie because Terry suggested it. And when I talked to the director, I was so excited because he offered me good money. He offered me flights home to see my family, which is important because a lot of times you work on a movie and you know, you're stuck for a couple months and they don't pay for it, et cetera. And number three, he offered me a really fancy hotel, the Hilton Garden Inn in Smyrna, Tennessee, uh, 30 minutes outside of Nashville. So uh, to me, it was exciting and I jumped right in and this movie was the most professional movie, one of the most professional that I ever worked on. And then things went awry. So let's bring Terry in to talk about it. Terry, uh, I am just coming, I'm gonna show a quick clip of us in the restaurant scene in The Body Sculptor. I ordered this car over a month ago. I don't care where it is. Look, if you can't get the car here in time, I'll order the damn car from somebody who can. This is a bad time I could come back. No, stop it. <laughs> car dealer. I ordered your lunch. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> so I can expect the car in time then. Thank you. Yes, um, no, no, please. Uh, you'll have water. You have patience this afternoon. Yes, I'd like to have water, please. I love water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did I hear the word bye? Damn BMW dealer, $52,000, you'd think he could get the car here on time. Hmm. This is for Zach's graduation? It's a week away, you said yes to the car. I said yes, but to a $52,000 BMW. I thought we were uh, you know, a little short on uh, funds. Uh. Jason, Nikki oh. got a car and a cruise, a BMW is the least we can do. So Terry, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, first of all, it is an honor to be here and knowing you for so many years, being a wonderful actress, a wonderful mom to Charles, a wonderful wife to Chris, a wonderful writer. I just memorized lines, so I'm very envious of you <laughs> and it's an honor to be here, Madame. Well, it's funny because we had the best experience with Joe Thomas, did we not? We did. We really did. I mean, there were a couple <laughs> things that went a little awry that made me suspicious. Like, I do remember my rap party when I was trying to take a picture of him. And he, he was like, no, no pictures. And I said, Joe, you look great. What's the problem? Like, you, you look great. And he's like, no, no, don't take my picture. And he almost grabbed the phone out of my hand. And now we know why, don't we, Terry? Yes, we do. Uh, there was an instance that I went over to his house because I had uh, trouble with the script or something like this. And I showed up. And um, 
there was no furniture in the house. <laughs> and there was no Joe Thomas and wife in house. And there were no two dogs that were with them at all times. Uh, <clears throat> it turned out, as you know, Nelly, he had 11 names, different names. And he always on the set said, <clears throat> well, uh, I can't fly. I'm afraid to fly. I can't do it. And I, and I can't drive a car because I was in an accident. Well, we found out that he, he couldn't because he was looked at from the FBI. Uh, they were trying to find him. And he had 11 aliases, I believe. But one of the most talented men, one of the most gifted men, you and I worked with him. It was a joy to be on the set. He was always funny. He was always alive. He was creative as far as writing was concerned. And all of a sudden, He's he gone. disappears. Well, speaking of him being funny on the set, I had a funny experience where I had told him I could play tennis because as an actor, you can do anything, right? Somebody asked you, can you dance? Yeah. Can you ride a unicycle? Mm-hmm. Are you a really good tennis player? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm on the tennis yes. court and uh, two things. I didn't like my outfit. <laughs> Did not like my outfit. So I just changed it. And then I get to the set and... Uh, I couldn't play tennis. So what they did was hire two <laughs> PA. They had, I mean, they dragged in two production assistants and they threw a ball over the net and then got like one shot of me hitting the ball so it could look like I was actually playing tennis. <laughs> and at one point I said to Joe, Joe, are we almost done with the shot? Like, how long is this going to take? How long is it going to take? Are we almost done? And he said, Nelly, you know, that's so unprofessional. You don't ask when you're going to be done shooting. And he goes, what's going on with you today? And I said, do you really want to know? And he goes, yeah. And I said, I stole this outfit from somebody's locker in the tennis club because it was. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know why he thought it was funny because, because, you know, he was a thief himself. <laughs> he, he, he was a master thief. He was, you know, and in, in, in other words, everything was so magical on the set, taking us out to dinner, uh, you know, the whole crew and cast uh, after shooting and stuff like this. Uh, as you and I talk, Nelly, wouldn't it be fun all of a sudden come across them and say, Oop, Joe, don't move. We want to talk and let him tell us this incredible journey that he's been on all his life. And then write a movie out of it. Because and write a movie out of it. Yes, because absolutely. Because the end of my chapter on him actually says, Joe Thomas, if you're out there, please call me. I'd love to work with you again. <laughs> because it's true. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. But I guys, have no idea where he is. No. no, we have no idea. But guys, it's funny because Terry and I figured it out. We were doing a show in Atlanta together after that hmm. called Running. And mm -hmm. um, we were filming the pilot. And we talked about how he disappeared. And Terry pulled up a picture of him. And he was like, do you think this is him? And it's a picture of a mug shot. And I was like, that's definitely him pre-plastic surgery. Because one of the things I noticed about him on set when I met him was, I'm, I'm like the girl who always looks people up, you know, from head to toe, notices everything. And I thought, here's this Goomba guy from Patterson, New Jersey, where my dad was from as well. And, you know, he's, he's smoking all day and he looks kind of rough. And yet uh, he had a little tiny button nose and it looked like he had had like a facelift and it made no sense. He's not the kind of guy who would get a facelift. So Terry and I are convinced that he had his face changed because he had so many identities. Absolutely. Absolutely. And remember that uh, we were all sitting around and then we passed that picture around and there were other people who said, that's him. That's exactly. him. Exactly. Like, and I said, Ooh, wow. Like with a big, whoa, a big whoa, different where? face with pre facelift. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So guys, I think it all goes back, Nelly. Yes. Excuse me. That just the idea that the talent of this man, uh, of being so witty, of being such a good writer, of being a very efficient director, of mm -hmm. uh, what he did, and 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 getting the whole production uh, outfit together, uh, so talented. Uh, where he would have gone, I, I don't know. I know. We need to find him. So, um, Terry, we're going to take a quick break, and then I want to come back and talk about what happened to the film after it was in the can. For information on my book, check out nelliesblog.com, and I'm on all social media platforms. Just search for Nelly Shudo. So, Terry, we're back. By the way, I love your background. Uh, I love your house in Colorado. Thank you. Thank you. It's so comfortable. Uh, you know, it's just a little ranch, like 47 acres. I, I said that one time. I said that one time to a Texan. Uh, he says, well, where do you live? And I said, well, I, I have a little, you know, I have a ranch in Colorado. 
And well, how many acres you got? I said, well, I'm 47. He started laughing at me. I said, I got more in my driveway than that. Oh, my God. These guys, these guys you know, so every time now I say, I have a little tiny ranch in Colorado. You know, well, uh, so this no is where I stand. The man from Texas, but uh, I would say land in Colorado is a little bit more special than land in Texas. <laughs> <It's> so- <laughs> Okay, so we were talking about Joe Thomas and the body sculptor. And uh, um, I wanted to bring up, by the way, remember how I got paid everything up front because I was in the first, you know, four weeks of the film, but you guys were having some trouble getting your money. I remember coming to set and that's when we knew things were going awry. Like you would just be sitting there on set all day or at the hotel all day waiting to know when you were supposed to be shooting, correct? Correct. Um, I, I, I never had money problem. He paid, he made more than, uh, than I really asked for because I was kind of like the head, um, guy and, and he knew if he kept me happy that he'd keep everybody else happy. But I found out, uh, through the other actors, they said, you know, we haven't been paid for two weeks and stuff like this. And I said, what? And that's when I went to, uh, Joe and, uh, and who was that? Chunky guy that was his assistant. What was his name? I call, I call Tom. I call him his little minion. Tom. Tom. <laughs> yes, yes, Tom. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Tom. And uh, I said, Tom, you have to play these actors. Uh, you know, uh, I'm fine, but everybody else, what, what's going on? And he got very embarrassed because obviously we find out later uh, that it was uh, strictly Joe uh, saying, no, don't pay this because we have to pay this. We have to pay. In other words, he was, it was like a Ponzi scheme. Mm-hmm. Things kept going. He taking money here and putting it there. But it's interesting, Nelly, that he always took care of me because I was on the set at all times. So you know, keep Kaiser happy. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is happy until I found out that my fellow actors were not getting paid. Well, I somehow and managed to slip again. under the under the wire. Yeah. Uh, but speaking the of all the money, etc. Yeah. Remember the helicopter scene? Tell tell the audience about oh, the my helicopter God. scene. Oh my God! Oh my gosh. Well, I got the dailies and stuff, um, looking at the dailies and so on. And uh, uh, he told our um, producer that was bringing in all the money. He says, we need an extra uh, money for this uh, helicopter scene because it's going to cost, you know, 10 grand, but it's going to be a beautiful shot. And, and here's how it's going to look and stuff like this. And so I'm looking at the dailies and I see this helicopter. And I said, I don't remember any helicopter on the set. What, what was this? And then I started looking back in, into uh, – uh, pieces that you could get for your film uh a sky, you know the blue cloudy sky or an airplane taking off or something like this and here i came across this exact same shot that he told the guy i need ten thousand dollars for and you could get it for like 320 dollars. basically it was just he, not uh, where did that how did he <laughs> do how did he do that how did he do that and he also said something about mcconaughey remember Yes. Uh, li- listen, we get McConaughey and, uh, you know, he just comes in and, and does this. So I need another $10,000. 10000 here, 10000 there. He basically Joe raped a, all the women a master of, of that. their money. He just took money from everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and, and then, and then put it someplace else. In other words, it was just, you know, pass it on, pass it on. Yeah. As I said, like a Ponzi scheme. This money kept going back and forth. And Wow. Well, and wow. we have this whole movie in the can. You were smart enough to, what did you do? How did you get the rights? What I did, was, I, it's not only the rights, but I, but I got all the footage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so I decided, well, I'm going to, I have a, uh, an editor friend, and I'm going to put this all together, considering Joe had disappeared and no, nobody was doing anything with, the, with this movie that was quite good. And so I assembled all the parts and stuff like this, and we had all the beginning, and we had all the end, but nothing in the middle, you know, <laughs> nothing. And so I, 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 so I assembled this whole thing, and we had this movie, and we screened it uh, out, out in California for, for some uh, investors and stuff like that. And I made the announcement before, uh, we're going to have the first half of the movie and we're going to have the second half of the movie but we're not going to have the middle half of the movie <laughs> and uh, so uh, so uh, and when it, when it got to the middle uh, where there was nothing I stopped the screening and then I just started talking this is what's happening here this is happening here and happening there and then it ended everybody liked the film but they were concerned about the middle <laughs> as we all were <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Terry, you've been in the business for so long. Surely you have another crazy experience to share that's similar. I don't know, similar. I, I, can, I can tell you a wonderful acting experience that Carol Burnett gave me. Okay. Uh, I was so fortunate to work with her for a year and a half, uh, this iconic comedian. And uh, I went to her and we had this one scene and stuff. And I said, Carol, it, it, it doesn't work. I, I, I don't, I don't I, it's, you know, the, the thing, and it's not funny. And it, it's just, it, it, and she said, stop it, stop it, stand up. Uh, okay. I said, up. She said, now do it. Just do it. Do it, do it. Stop, touch me. Do something. <laughs> in other words, what she was saying was physicalize it and something will happen. Stop the intellectual uh, of thinking about it and do it. And that was her instinct. She says, Terry, if I have to put a red nose on, we will make it funny. Don't worry about it. Just <laughs> do it. Okay. And that was one of the great acting lessons uh, of comedic uh, delivery that I've ever had. Well, I think that that's the best job you ever had. I, I only say that just because that was my dream. I grew up watching the Carol Burnett show. And the reason I wanted yeah. to be in comedy and be in the industry was solely because of her. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, she, she's iconic. And to see her work and see her how the one thing that's so wonderful is, uh, you know, we were shooting live. We had two shows Friday at five and seven live audiences. She'd go out there and warm them up. In other words, no stand-up comic or juggler or whoever does this. She went out there and warmed them up uh, for us. And uh, we all were in the dressing room and they all looked at each other. And every before the performance, we say, we are the luckiest actors in the world right mm -hmm. now. We're getting paid a lot of money and we're working with one of the greatest comedians of all time. And she's warming them up for us. I think I'm going to have to call that? her. I'm going to try to get in touch with her and put her on the show. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Terry, also tell us about how you're doing this uh, film festival in Colorado. Thank you for asking. It's called the URA International Film Festival. And uh, this is our second year uh, that we're doing it. And um, it's been very, very successful. Um, uh, when I started this thing, um, there was one word that I just wanted to permeate our festival, and that was elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously we all know the Telluride Film Festival, which is down, down the way here, uh, about a 45 minute drive, and, and they're one of the top in the world. And we had a gal work for us, uh, work for the Telluride Film Festival for five years. And she says, Terry, your quality is just as good as Telluride. Mm -hmm. You're on the right track. And it made me feel so good. And this year, it's going to be twice as good. Um, uh, we have uh, honoree Jim Hart, uh, the famous writer who wrote Hook, who wrote uh, The Contact, uh, Dracula. He's a great, great writer. And one of the evenings of the festival will be in my uh, backyard. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty big backyard overlooking the mountains. But uh, we're going to literally have a screening of Hook. And he is going to talk afterwards about his experiences with Spielberg and the people that worked on the thing right in the backyard, live with the stars coming down. And uh, it's going to be wonderful. The whole film festival is June 25th through the 27th. And uh, you can go on our website, urayfilmfestival.com, uh, uh, and get all the information. And it's going to be Quite, quite a, quite a lovely experience. I'm very happy to be part of it. I'll have to pop in because, uh, you know how Terry says he has a little 47 acre place in Colorado. I have a little <laughs> tiny condo in Telluride, so Terry and I hang out in the mountains sometimes. But uh, and I've seen that beautiful backyard. It's the perfect place for a screening. Yes, and, and 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 it's so much fun. You know, you get everybody here. You know, the 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 uh, what they call the patron passes. In other words, the people that are really supporting this. And uh, you know, we have apple tie and wine and coffee, uh, fresh apple pies, and uh, we will have popcorn. Somebody just kind of going around, hey, watch, hey, look, hey, listen, get your popcorn here. <laughs> we'll have somebody do that, you know, make it fun. You know, have, everybody's going to have fun. And then have Jim Hart talk about the movie that we just saw. Wow, that's going to be special. Well, Terry, it's been so great to have you as a guest on the show. Honestly, that experience, it really was one of the best acting experiences I ever had. That's why I think we both felt like the rug was pulled from underneath us. And um, people can read the chapter. They'll get more juicy details. But uh, it's been so great to have you on the show. And always great one to thing, see One thing, face. one thing, one thing. You say rug pull, pulled out from under you. It's interesting your journey, honey. 
because you're writing a run now up in the sky with your writing and your acting and your being mother and and a, a wonderful wife. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. And this was pleasure for me to be with you. Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you in the mountains. Okay? Bye. Terry, thanks so much for joining us. Guys, every time I see you, I will have a new guest on the show to talk about their experiences that correspond to the chapter from my book, 50 Moments, Faking It, Making It, and Taking It in Hollywood. So thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you next time. For information on my book, check out nelliesblog.com, and I'm on all social media platforms. Just search for Nellie Shudo.